Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Honorable Presiding Member, the opportunity to present a policy statement after proroguing Parliament was the should have been used by the President to address the anxieties and doubts that are in the minds of the people, to get rid of them, at least to allay their fears. But what finally happened was that he tried to paint a rosy picture. It was an abysmal failure. His statement did not offer any explanation as to whether we would be coming out of the miserable position the country is situated in. Now, with all this misery and hardship, today the questions that are asked in every household is whether there's going to be power cuts in the coming days, whether there will be extended gas shortages that we are currently facing. Will there be a medicine shortage? Will there be scarcity of food? Then there is all this, this question of the economy grinding to a halt in this country. With all these problems, the country is already experiencing these shortages. What is in store in the near term is nothing but catastrophic. And based on the direction we are moving in, we would soon be a bankrupt nation, there is no doubt. And every economic activity will come to a grinding halt, and the general public will be in the streets, uh, Madam Presiding Member. I foresee a big demand for wheelbarrows, not for anything else. We would need wheelbarrows to move the depreciated Sri Lankan rupees around. That is what is going to happen in the future if we don't take the advice from the right economists who are talking about the plight in which we are today. Now, based on the actions of the government and the economic decision makers, it is blatantly evident. The decision makers, instead of looking for a solution to pull the country out of the abyss, is passionately pursuing the devil to further entrench the country in the abyss and cause immense misery and hardship to the people of this country. Honorable Presiding Member, every decision of this government since it got elected to power has been reactive and agenda-based. Where decisions were taken in isolation, without holistic assessment, with proper scientific uh, advice, the ramifications of such decisions would have on the economy as a whole is all but terrible, and that is what I am going to lay out here. Here are some of the ramifications of the reactive agenda-based decisions. Power shortage is linked to fuel shortage, which is once again linked to shortage of foreign exchange. Shortage of medicines is linked again to foreign exchange crisis. Food shortage is linked to the ban on fertilizer against which so many who knew the subject was advising the government, but they were turning a deaf ear. Further, it was exacerbated by the dearth of foreign exchange once again. Then again, we see the inflation reaching double digits. That's linked to the tax cuts that the government gave to their preferred businessmen. Money printing and artificially fixed exchange rate also caused inflation. Then gas shortage linked to, again, foreign exchange crisis, then due to misguided regulatory actions. Now, there are a long list of these things. Many reversals of these government decisions brought before this House endorses my contention that the decision-making at government level have been very haphazard, to say the least. Mr. Presiding Member, the pandemic has become the bogeyman for the government, for every ill faced by this nation. The pandemic did create a situation, of course, like it did for all our neighbors in the South region. Sri Lanka was not the only country affected by the pandemic. In His Excellency, the President's own words, he did say, we did better than most nations. But all our SARC neighbors who did worse than us on the pandemic front have weathered the pandemic storm and have come out shining well. And they have all, their reserves are, have increased. But whereas our reserves are plunging to the bottom. And this is what is happening. The secret of our SAC neighbors' success was all of them had cohesive, structured plans guided by proper leadership to weather the pandemic storm, while Sri Lanka was running behind the devil with no plan and no direction. Due to the time constraint, I could focus only on limited economic situation uh, issues in the country. 
Now we are in the dire state purely because of inaction and misguided actions of decision makers. Honorable Speaker, the learned Ghana of the Central Bank has to date failed to digest the basic economic principle, that being the market is smarter than everybody else. What this means in pure layman's terms is one cannot fight and or control the marketplace. If you do, market forces will hit you back hard where it hurts you most with venom. Honorable Presiding Member, two important tools that align market forces is the exchange rate and the domestic interest rate. The result of this misguided action in the context of foreign exchange market is this. One is